what was it like the first day um, with your postgraduate diploma when you landed in your first block? How you felt on the first day versus the fifth day? It was very, very nerve wracking. Um, it was amazing. Um, I was excited. And at the end of the day, I was like, wow, I met some beautiful, beautiful people. However, I was like overwhelmed. And I was like, oh my God, did I make a mistake? You know, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. But if I think then to now, I've grown. It showed, it showed growth. As much as I was so scared and nervous, I'm most proud of that, that I've achieved it. On the first day, I felt like, okay, maybe I shouldn't have started this. I don't belong here. All these people are beautiful. They're clever. They've got so much to say, you know. So the anxiety was like, you know, creeping in and stuff. But at the end of that week, it, you know, it, it, it was it was okay. We I had started chatting to people and it was fine. For us, the first week for me personally, the block was a lot of pressure. Um, not what I expected, late, late, late nights, um, mm -hmm. but uh, an eye opener for the start of a very, very exciting journey. I've done some, some formal um, education training at other, other varsities, other business schools, and my expectation was a little bit different. So I thought I was going to walk into this whole stiff academic vibe, you know, where people sit in their gray suits and they look at you weird. <laughs> I felt comfortable from day one. I felt like a student walking onto campus again. Um, it's, it was just amazing. Uh, from the first contact at reception, all the way through to um, getting something to snack on in the canteen. And Henley um, really went out of the way to make you feel so special. Mm -hmm. Be very part of the family. And I think that's what, what Gertie was also saying as well. It's, it's family, not just a business school. It was very welcoming. Um, I think that the big thing for me was that first reflective paper. Um, the position papers, you kind of expect, okay, I'm going to write academic papers, although that's also something on a whole, a whole new level. But how did you feel about that first reflective paper? It was no. almost like analysis paralysis because um, you, you're almost scared to, to, to not put enough on there. Um, you are told that you will reference, reference, reference and use those models. Now, um, acting back and, look, and looking back at things that have happened, um, critical, critical incidents, for instance, looking back at things we needed to talk about, it really, so you don't realize the stress you put your body through to actually go back to that place again and sit down and actually reflect on that. And um, ha having new ways of approaching it, and if I had just approached it in that manner, when it occurred at that time in my life, if I had the tools then, it would have been a, a much easier journey for me. Just for yeah. discovery. Mm. Lots of discovery. Um, I remember when I wrote my first reflective paper, so I started writing and then I had to close my book and put it away for a while because I was like, there's no way I'm sharing all this information with anyone, you know? <laughs> but, you know, a part of me also felt, but the journey it's what it's about you know if you need to grow and learn from it then you have to put it and write about it but for like the first two three days i would write a bit and i was like no i need to, to step back and think about how i'm going to position it mm. but ultimately after it was all just jotted down i felt a sense of relief i had those techniques those tools and i was like okay like how getty was saying I'm like why didn't I know this earlier, you know? Exactly. Mm, but yeah, interesting. Um, I, I don't know if you guys experienced it as well. Like I've made quite a few um, male friends in our cohorts and they're all cool and say, how do you make yourself vulnerable? Like I, 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 it's like a pattern or something that I've learned, you know, to be strong. And it's, it's so hard for me to break down those barriers and to get to the soft side inside. And although we all struggle with it, it's not just, but it was just very interesting. Like some of the men that I'm, um, you know, communicating with in our cohort are finding it very difficult. And how did you find it, Gareth? 
Um, I got a distinction in every single reflective paper, including the first ones. <laughs> wow, um, well done. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not scared of. I'm not scared of, of vulnerability. I think, and maybe that's probably why I did well in them. I mean, I'm like I. I knew I was there to to sort of give it my all. So, and that, and that's what I did. I mean, I, I figured like I, th I think Zandre really got got to me the first time. That that first lesson where she where she sort of introduced the whole sort of concept between reflective behind reflective practice and um, you know what it can do for you as a leader. And or even as an employee or as an entrepreneur or whatever, or as a father, as a husband, whatever, um, you know, reflection is 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 key. I think um, to to personal growth and development. And I I think I went in already knowing that because I you know I I practiced quite a lot of mindfulness and meditation before I even started the degree. So I was familiar with the concept of reflecting and looking inwards uh, and and looking for problems and solutions inside. So I, when she, when she came across and she, she introduced this concept to us from an academic perspective, I actually got really excited. I was like, oh, well, this is, this is really cool. Cause now it's not just some airy fairy, like meditation and yoga stuff. This is like, this is real hard science now. So I really like this. This is cool. <laughs> so I got, I got quite excited about, you know, ladders of inference and, and icebergs and all kinds of things, because now you, you get like these more and, and young. Oh no. Oh my word. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. And I think that's why. I did well with it, but and that's why I was able to apply it a lot easier than than maybe other guys in the class. Um, yeah, so I, I think I I just approached it from a very practical perspective, like and that was it. I think people get so intimidated. Same with like finance. It's like people get intimidated by it, right? And if you if you just drop the intimidation and you just think, okay, how can I use this? How can I actually just do this? Like get your hands dirty with it. Then mm. then you usually do well with it. Yeah. Yeah, I I, th I think you've got a very valid point, and I think also I'm um, Cheryl. I don't know how you have you also like experience, um, like you obviously dealing with the personal mastery side of it, right? So you you you're diving in deep within your soul. You're finding out what archetype, what personality you are. All of a sudden, you're like, for me, I'm an extrovert, so I think you can figure yeah. out personality and where I sit on that scale. But um, yeah. then you go through that, and then you start wondering oh my gosh, is there something wrong with my personality? And you start questioning your personality and still you start diving. What was that experience like when you discovered who you are for the very first time through Carl Jung's um, theory? I think it was very, very emotional for me because I did have a, a moment um, during one of the assignments and it made me realize I am who I am because of certain um, incidents and it made me stronger and a better person. It also made me apply it more as a leader, not just a leader, but as a human being and, and as, as a person in my personal life as well. I, I loved individual reflection. I enjoyed um, the self-mastery, everything. So for me, that was very, very important to learn. And I think using all those techniques and applying it in your daily life, it, I also had a time where I took a step back from the critical thinking exercises, uh, from the personal examples that I shared in my assignments. It also made me realize, oh, I could have done this differently. So all of those uh, information that I've learned in the different blocks, especially with the individual reflection, really guided me and helped me in how to do it better next time as well. So, so raise your hand. Who of you are going ahead and doing the MBA? Trying. Oh. Pending. <laughs> Listen, I've I've heard the people that do the PG dip. Apparently, it's a breeze. The MBA is a breeze for the people that's done the PG dip. So that gives me a little bit of hope. But I mean, I think the the interesting thing is I, I I'm just I'm tr I would love to hear your stories of syndicates, the mini MBA version that we do in the PG dip group, the ALP groups. Um, what was the the whole for me it was like survivor in the beginning <laughs> it really was like survivors like who is building alliances with who and we we were like a, we we're a very dynamic group like we have combustible personalities um so <laughs> um uh, so when those personalities i'm um, start becoming like you know now we're working on a project and how people deal with pressure how did you experience that part of of the pg dip 
Well, Gertie and I were part of Team Rubicon and we were all female group. And I think that was the first in the PG dip at Henley. And it was very dynamic, very diverse. Uh, we all have different personalities, very strong ladies. However, they come with strong background of knowledge. I personally have learned a lot from each and every one of them. It actually grew me more and I'm very grateful for that. Gertz, I don't know if you want to add more on the group. Yes, we've had our moments, the forming, norming, storming stages, but I think we were very respectful of each other and understanding, you know, when it came to crunch time, to deadlines, we knew what was expected of us, the roles we played, and when we needed to, de to deliver. And I must say, I'm very thankful because we've gotten a distinction in our ALP. <laughs> well, happens, yeah. So um, I'm going to have you on speed dial when I reach the point of my... my <laughs> so I will be in touch. Um, I wanted to, to just, um, just to get a little bit serious here is, is when you started versus when you, when you completed, how much have you changed? Oh, yes. A lot. Personal growth, personal self-mastery. Mm -hmm. I have grown a lot. I've, I've learned a lot. I can't explain the learnings that I've learned. I started the PG dip with no academia background. And this is one of my fears that I had in the beginning. And I shared this with Zandre as well um, after class. And, and, you know, she guided me to help me. I've never done referencing before. And to come this far is quite an achievement. It, re it really, really was. I, that's why I, I feared in the very beginning, there were more people, like Lebo said, <laughs> there was more smarter than you, more intelligent. So you start to question yourself, but I never lost faith and I never lost confidence. It just made me persevere more, become more resilient, ask questions, do a lot of research. That's what I did in order for me to better myself and apply myself. Mm. That's what I've so done. I'd like, I'd like to speak to the, to a point you just made there. I think, sure. Something that uh, one of the shifts, and I say one of, um, you know, specifically because I want to, I want it to be noted that that the PG Jip changed my thinking or, or shifted a viewpoint in more than one or many ways. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, just to go back to the original question, that I'm a completely different person um, that I was a year and a half ago, um, and I think so. The point that I wanted to make was one of the shifts that in my thinking that the PG Jip created was that not that necessarily what you were saying there that um, there's so many people that are that are there that are smarter than you or whatever it's not that they're smarter than you but they're smarter than you in a specific area you're smarter than them in a specific area and you know it, it, it taught me that there's this incredible diversity and mm -hmm. you can you can use that you can you can bring it together and that goes back to the the, the question about the ALP team the syndicate team um, I, I struck gold there, absolute gold. Uh, my team, we had the most amazing team. There was almost no, no problems. Obviously, we went through some forming and storming. Um, it's natural, but minimal. And I, I, I love every single one of them. To, with, with every ounce of my being, they are, I will be mates with them till the day I die. Absolutely. Um, and we also got a distinction. We also did very well. And, and that shows, you know, when, you're, when your team works, you, it, it, it works. Um, you, you become, I, I, don't, I don't want to say we're a high-performing team because, you know, that's a subject. Carmen, I don't know if you've got there yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, the rest of you guys will know that you've got to be very careful to claim you're a high team. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm not going to claim it, but I'm going to say that we we were a very good, very good team, um, and and I think oh, what what a team like one of the if not the best team I've ever worked with in any setting. Um, and I'm already I'm already on my second block of the MBA. Um, I'm like five months in now, four months, five months. No, I don't know, whatever it doesn't matter. It all becomes a blur. Um, like. <laughs> And the team is completely different, completely different. And on MBA, you, you, your team doesn't, you don't do any work together for, for grades. So your team is more like a support system. Like, you know, you don't even have to work, talk to each other if you don't want to. Um, yeah. And, but it's, but it's a complete, even, even, even still, it's completely different. It's like 
four months in, four months in on the PG dip, my team were my best mates were, were having lunch and drinking tequila. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's the, there's a big difference there as well. Yeah. Good. Well done, Gareth. Well done. And, and I mean, to all of you, and, and I think what, what struck me the most, and I would like for Gertie and, and Lebo to weigh in on this as well, is um, when we found out at the end of block five what these um, topics are that we have to choose from, um, you immediately, because everybody, as, as Gareth says, everybody has this area of expertise. One person's in banking, one person mm. uh, is in education, and one person is working at, in government, um, government level. So you, you're sitting with people that understand almost the pestle model, like you've got one expert in each one of them. Um, mm. And when you see the mind share come together, but the thing is when you, everybody's so passionate about a specific topic, and I think the most important thing was to say, okay, right, what topic are we choosing if we all be passionate about I think that's the key. Um, to solve a world problem or a business problem and making an impact. And I don't know about you guys, but the immediate sense from, from all of us in our cohorts is we all want to make an impact. We don't just want to do something, yeah. an idea, mm. solve a business problem or a societal problem. We want to change the world, build the people that build the businesses that build Africa. And and, and what topics did you guys choose? And, and what was that journey like? We, we started with, with, with the one topic. We went in, you know, full in, in into it. But because of, as you're saying, different people, different backgrounds and that, and we later changed it. And um, boiling down to, to team dynamics as well. You know, we, we worked so well together that even with that transition everybody was just in agreement and and everybody pulled in their weight and did what they needed to do so with choosing the topic and changing it later and putting in the work like everyone was good at something that brought it all together and it it, it was just amazing as a syndicate group we all spoke about personality clashes and the storming and you know all those things that come with it but ultimately it's just so amazing to watch when it's crunch time and things need to be done everybody just pulls their weight and come together mm. to, to to deliver what needed to be delivered i can, I can say for uh, from rubicon side it was a very different approach because again we have a very diverse uh, group group of women um, but all coming from different spaces um, in technology and, and working with people. And I had a, a, a little bit of a, a need that I, I needed my team to assist me with. Um, I was currently at work struggling with a business problem at work. Um, I am a manager of people. And um, one of the topics had to do with employee engagement and how employee engagement can help your business um, bolster competitiveness. And that one immediately caught my eye, but my cohort didn't, uh, or my group didn't fall for that one to start off with. So we, we, we ended up with about six or seven, and um, we decided, okay, let's, let's not put some, a finger in a hat type of thing, let's really look at it. And um, so we worked through a funnel process. Um, we, we got some main topics that we went away, and we, um, we used the first few weeks really to drill down into understanding the elements and the key elements within employee engagement, if that was something that we really could, if there was firstly, if there was enough information about it out there, um, is there really a big problem that we could solve? Mm -hmm. Or is that just a, a, a research problem that someone else has already done? Um, and we ended up with so much rich information that um, it actually, uh, some of the people in our group said, you know, I'm not a people manager, but I've learned so much about a new topic. And um, for me personally, that I could, can, could take out of it is to actually take what we have um, read through all of the stuff that we had to, to um, read through our project and take it back to work, practice it on a, on a daily basis and have like real life um, evidence of what we are testing. So by the time we got to actually presenting the ALP, um, it was like second nature and talking to, to colleagues in the room. Mm -hmm. 
But what advice would, would you guys give people um, to have that work-life balance? Because I think a lot of people in this time that we're living in um, probably think it's not possible. I, I was having an interview earlier on with another group. They all just wanted to quit. The kids, the kids it, was, it was about um, high demand um, then Zoom meetings from the morning till late at night. Then they have to do the job. Then they have the, the assignments. And, and then there's all this, this work that you need to do. How do you find that balance and then still make time for me, for my personal growth beyond all of this? So first of all, make time for your wellness or you will be forced to make the time for your illness. It's that simple. Wow. Um, look, Another thing, that, and this is another epiphany I reached on the PG Dip, and, and once again, the great Dr. Zandre Kiwi's influence was, was ever present here, present, uh, present here, is um, I, I learned to completely disidentify with my career. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if that's the right way to say it. So, so most people... Their identity is intrinsically linked to their job, their role, their title, mm -hmm. right? Like you're not Gareth Vera, you're Gareth Vera project manager, you're Gareth Vera portfolio manager, you're Gareth Vera operations director, whatever, right? You, you're not just Gareth Vera. What about Gareth Vera father, Gareth Vera guitar player, Gareth Vera TV watcher, whatever you want. You know what I mean? What about, what about just being without having to have status and how much money you got in your bank account, what car you drive and all this and what tackies you're wearing, all this other rubbish. And, you know, PG Dip really taught me that. It, like, it taught me, like, you are not your job. Your job is something you do to make money and to, you know, be productive and to achieve mm -hmm. a, a object because maybe your job is impactful and changes the world. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not. It doesn't, maybe, it, maybe you just like it. But whatever the reason is, you are not your job. You are not your career. You're not your title. You're not what that degree says, right? You're, a, and when you realize that, then then you realize that, um, and the same applies to the degree. You're not the degree. You're not an MBA. You're not a PhD. Dip. You are a person on your own, and you need to look after that person. All these other things are just things you do, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the way I approach it. It's like I don't let any particular thing I'm doing. Any role I'm playing, like job I'm doing, or thing I'm studying, literally take over my entire existence. Because once you do that, it's like it's 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 your your conscience that's taking out of, over your being. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but mm. if I can if I can add to that, Gareth, I totally agree with you. And I think it's one of the light bulb moments for me with the PJ Dev mm. was that it's okay to be just a human being. You know, we, we, we go through life and learning all these things and how people are treated and this is what happens and that then it, it becomes sort of a norm. But with the PG dip, it finally just dawned on me that it's okay to be just a human being. It's, it's okay to have good relationships with people. It's okay to treat people with respect. You don't have to shout to get your way. Like, mm. it's... And it, it, it's one of the things that Zondra drilled into us as well, that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's just okay to be human. Yeah, when you, get, when you introduce that humanity yeah. back into the workplace, back into management and leadership, mm -hmm. it changes things. And it's, it's, it's been lost in South Africa. South African management is rife with mis, mistreatment and, and overwork. And you people get treated like absolute rubbish, like they're robots. They must just work 16 hours a day, seven days a week. And who cares if they're sick? Who cares if it's their daughter's birthday? Who cares? Like companies don't care. And that's wrong. It should not and be that, that way. that humanity does not make you any less of a leader. In fact, it, it, it helps you build, you know, more meaningful relationships with the people around you. And yeah, it's, it's just amazing to, to finally just accept it and know that it's okay to, to be like that yeah and all the greatest greatest leaders um if you yeah. if you look at everyone from kennedy to churchill to marcus aurelius they will they all had that kind of approach they didn't just work 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 i mean they worked hard don't get me wrong but they you know they also 
took time for themselves. They took time for yeah, research. yeah. Like if you look at the Renaissance era, um, there was the the era of the Black Death. So one in every three people died um, during the Black Death, and that was in the time when the modern era was born. And people inherited money, and they were basically um, at home being creative. They were reading a lot all of a sudden, and they started becoming these creative human beings. And this is where they actually started imagining things and creating things. And this is where the printing press was created, Leonardo da Vinci, um, all of these amazing artists. And I think, um, you know, getting back to our humanity, and as Gareth right, rightfully says, it's like that robotic thing that we, we're experiencing, oh my goodness. Um, and, and just bringing, bringing it back to, to humanity, um, earlier on, I, I had a discussion with another um, a group and just um, not not trying to be political in any shape or form, but if you look at how Biden gave America hope, um, mm. because character and values matter, kindness yes. matters. Yes. It is, it is a lot, a lot. Mm. Yes, it, it's your beginnings. It's it's where you've come from. It's how you apply it, and and to voice on Gareth and what Lebo has said as well, humanity is very crucial in today's leadership in Africa and management, the style, the techniques used. You've got to take care not only of yourself, but of your employees that report to you as well. And you've got to be human. And that's what and that's, that's, taught to me. Just the thing, if you're kind to yourself, it's easier to be kind to the next person. Yeah. And you know? yes. Yeah. Yeah. And also, Carmen, you touched on something there about creativity, which I think is is also, we, I don't think we've maybe mentioned it, but it's a big thing for Henley, a uh, big thing on the PGW and the MBA, the creativity and the, and the reflection. And I think for me, at least, I believe that real proper creativity, and I use this a lot on the PGW, comes from that place of, of sort of rest and recreation and, and quietness. You guys are talking earlier about quietening your mind. Like if when I get my mind to really shut up, that is when I get great ideas. That's you know that's why you get great ideas when you're in the shower. It's the same because your mind's <laughs> racing, you know. Like it's whenever your mind like really just goes, that's when the real creativity comes, and that's happened to me so many times. So it's a it's a process that I continuously try to recreate. It's, as you said, uh, it's very difficult. Um, but but the PG Dip also taught me to to capitalize on that. Yeah, I, I walked in thinking um, it's only going to be personal mastery, but I, I was thrilled to see AI, uh, machine learning, innovation, financial acumen, everything is in there. And I'm pleasantly surprised how everything has been adapted to the world we now live in. And solving complex problems, critical thinking, and how those skills are being applied in the most difficult times that we live in um, was for me well, it currently is for me one of the groundbreaking um, revelations. Well, it's it's, it's I mean, almost very it's difficult to, to put into words or to explain to somebody what the PG dip is and what it does mm. for you as a person, not just as a as a leader or a, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to to describe to someone who doesn't know him, who doesn't know the PG dip, come and do this thing. Um, it will change your life. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it's, <laughs> it's hard to put into words because there's so many things. You, you, you forget things. You forget how many ways it's changed. Um, like, but, but, you do, but, you, but you are different and you do things. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'm looking That's at... Like you, you, you become a brand new person, but you leave a with, a, with a newness in you, you know? Mm. You've, like, put everything behind you. you this new person that's just moving forward and... It's, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I actually, I, I I miss it, hey. I miss it. I miss the people. Yeah. I miss the learnings. I actually went through withdrawal symptoms because I was no longer doing the PG dip. <laughs> no more assignments. <laughs> no more d deadlines. And I had to also adapt and adjust, like to my new norm. The MBA is much much slower. Um, you it? like yeah yeah MBA. So I did an assignment just recently. I finished that one. And now I'm on the next block, but the assignment's only June, Jan. Um, so you on top of each other, like like the PG dip, like PG dip is is, is true. Yeah, yeah, no, PG dip is like just to, submit an assignment two weeks later, submit another assignment. Like yeah. uh, MBA is like two months, three months in between. What Henny Life has made for me is is really um, I found something unexpected. Um, I do find that. 
I have a lot of experience in, in the world that I operate in, but I lost my confidence along the way a little bit. And bring, uh, coming back to Henley has really given me my confidence back to go back and to instill that. Um, so I'm, I'm truly grateful. I'm, I'm truly humbled by um, people like Xandre, um, uh, Jay, um, Dr. Janet, um, Elijah, um, you know, just all the people that looked after us and took care of us so well, Vanolia, um, through the journey, never saying a negative word, always an encouraging way of saying, come, let's do this. You're almost there. Just a little bit more. Um, and it pushed me and it helped me to, to really get through something and get through a lot in my life, in my personal space, as well as in my professional um, career. So I'm forever thankful and um, my learning journey has, is definitely not over and I'm applying for the MBA. So I'm looking forward to be back on campus um, with the, seeing all of you there in the Vatican team. Well, I just want to say that the MBA journey has been amazing. From someone who has had no academic experience to where I am today, I'm forever grateful for Zandre, Dr. Janet, Jay, also Elijah, yes, who helped us so much and we are so thankful. And for the support, I think it's very important to have that support, people to talk to, you know, guide you. Um, all these learnings have made me into a better human being and I will forever be grateful for that. And thank you so much. And yes, I will be there for the NBA. Don't worry, Zandra. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the ladies have really taken the words out of my mouth, but <clears throat> same here. It, it, it was a wonderful journey. I'll always be grateful for just the reassurance of just being human, that it's okay at Zondre's heart, her welcoming spirit, Elijah as well, uh, Elijah. And just everyone on campus that made sure that we felt like we belong. You know, Deboho was at reception at, the, at some point when you walk in the you like you'll be surprised oh he knows my name like you know <laughs> you know you'll hear people saying hi Lebo," and you're like oh okay so it it it, it <laughs> became a home we all became just family and it was just a wonderful year i i know i looked forward to being on campus i probably gained a few more kilos than i would have expected <laughs> while i was there <laughs> like every time i went you know the size went up a bit but it, it it was awesome it was lovely i i loved it and i hope to to go back and do my mba soon as well i, th I think the same as everyone else i think um zandre janet jay uh the three of them are a force to be reckoned with um they they really really put on a, a good show like the doing a degree their degree particularly because i know it's not always the same team um but I, I, feel, I think that I got the best of Henley with the three of them, uh, that, that, com that particular combination. So, yeah, I'm very, very happy with it. Like Lebo said, it just, it, you know, them, that your team, it's just one big happy family. Was in, I, I would do it forever. I would just do it over and over and over. I just like, I'd, I'd have like 10 PhDs if we could. I just wanted to say it was an absolute privilege to meet each one of you. Um, Zandre is as forward as your details. Um, to me, I ha it was it was more about celebrating the class of 2020 and the resilience and the character and the values of anybody that has taken this year and pushed through, no matter the circumstances. Um, it really shows resilience and character and and sets the heart going forward. Um, follow in your footsteps, and I just want to congratulate. I really am in awe of you here, and each one of you inspire me so much. <laughs>